short video for the basketball game from a few weeks ago, courtesy of CBS Sports, the game between Butler and Notre Dame. As you can see, Notre Dame up five with a few seconds left. Patrick lets Butler have this dunk. As it's, they let them have a free dunk, it's not going to have an impact on the final score of the game, as they had already won. However, that's not the case for all. If you were to bet on this game, Notre Dame letting that dunk allowed them to win the game by three points. However, they were a four-point favorite, meaning that if you were to have bet on Notre Dame, you would have lost, as they had to win by at least four points for you to win your bet. That happens a lot, as sometimes you get unfortunate breaks, but that doesn't stop people from gambling, as they continue to gamble all throughout the United States, and it's continuing to increase in popularity, regardless of whether it's legal. Betting is only legal in four states currently, which is allowing us, which is harming, not for allowing us to reap a lot of benefits that we could have received if betting were legal. Some of these benefits include additional tax revenue, stopping crime, and reducing addiction of get bet. The American Gambling Association predicts that around 70% of bets made in the United States are done legal, illegally. Take, for example, the NCAA tournament, which is composed of three weekends of 68 basketball games. They predict, the AGA predicted that $9 billion was going to be bet on these games in these three weekends. However, at least $7 billion of it is going to be done illegally. That's a lot of money that could be taxed and improve our society that instead goes to other people. And you ask who are those people? These people are called bookies, who take bets from people who want to bet who aren't able to legal in their states. Bookies are legal and also they cause a lot of addiction from studies. Take for example Rick Riley's story of an unnamed man who during March Madness kept accumulating losses and, and a lot of debt. Say he was down $200,000, he would try to bet his $200,000 back to come back even. However, he kept losing and eventually accumulated so much debt he had to sell his home, stocks, and cars. If betting was legal where you have to front the money and pay the money before you lose it, it's unlikely that he would have sold his house, car, and stocks in order to just make a sports bet. 1992 federal law prohibits sports betting in all states except for Oregon, Nevada, Delaware, and Montana. However, New Jersey is currently pushing to become the fifth state to have sports betting legal. However, professional sports leagues, including the NFL, NBA, and more, are trying to not allow that to go through, as they're worried that if betting becomes more popular, the integrity of the game will be hurt, and in turn, popularity will be down. However, that should not be a concern, as if you look in England, where betting is legal, the main soccer league in England is the English Premier League, and the popularity has not been hit at all due to betting, which has increased in recent years. Also, the integrity should not be concerned as well either. The most recent uh, point-fixing scandal involved a 1978 college basketball team as they were being paid by people to lose games by a certain amount of points or win by a certain amount of points. However, because the people were making bets in Nevada, where it's legal, they were able to investigate this case as they noticed a weird trend and were able to find them and get them in trouble. We can't continue to bet be have betting be illegal as we're putting money in the wrong people's hands. Rather than the government, we're putting it in criminals' hands. And as James Suriaki, New Jersey betting expert says, we're making criminals rich. It's not just that though, we're also allowing law enforcement officials to have to investigate these crimes rather than other crimes that have real victims, such as murder, theft, and other crimes. However, the main draw towards legalizing sports betting is the tax revenue. Suriaki in his article, for they, in their case to make sports betting legal, predicted that $100 million in additional tax revenue would come into the state of New Jersey in the first year of legalizing sports betting, which is a lot of money that can improve the welfare of lives. So, regardless of whether you bet or not, sports betting being legalized can have a direct impact on your life. Take, for example, New Jersey, where they predict that they could receive $100 million in additional tax revenue in year one. That can improve our health care, can improve our education, our highways and roads, even if you don't bet, that's directly going to better your life. In addition, if you look around <coughs> the United States and gambling in general, 40 states allow forced betting, 43 states have lotteries, and 48 states have some form of commercial gambling. All those forms of gambling can be said to have a lot more luck rather than skill compared to sports betting. As sports betting uh, involves more knowledge and studying rather than these practices. However, sports betting is still legal, which is a main problem, which is a big problem in our society. As New Jersey is showing, this, they're trying to repeal the federal law and make this a state-to-state -state basis, which many experts think will happen in the near future. When this comes about, it's our job to change this and allow sports betting to be legal. Many people think, many people look at it and see, oh, sports betting, it's good, it takes away people's money. However, all other forms of gambling are doing this as well, and there's no reason why we shouldn't push to make this legal. 
So in the meantime, before this comes about, everyone can do their job, whether it's to write to senators or to have their voice heard in order to change the way that sports betting is seen throughout the United States.